Have you realized that a lot of companies tend to overwhelm their customers by giving them big terms like 4K, 3K, 2K, QLED? And when you enter a store and you're trying to buy something very simple, they're giving you all these things, they don't know what to buy. And they end up telling you that, buy this one. You come and bring it to your house and then you're watching it and you're not even enjoying the experience. Have you realized that? But do you know that knowing the type of display you buy can reduce the budget you are on by 40%? Not the budget you are on, but you know what I'm talking about. Did you also know that LCD displays originated from the concept of carrots? The cor- The cor- So these and many more are some of the reasons why me and together with my team have put together a series we call the Tech Fundamentals, where we explain the different fundamentals of tech like displays, battery, so when you're going in to get this stuff, you know what you're going in for and you know what's good for you. I am Michelle Manuel and welcome to Tech Haven. When we talk about display or images, what comes to mind first? Pixel. Pixels, pixel perfect. The whole lot. But then pixel. So what then is a pixel? Basically, a pixel is the smallest individual unit of an image which contains a color. Now, I'm not going to be too lecture lecture because I know most of us don't like lectures. But then, what is a pixel? Let's take a look at this video. Now, as we zoom into the pixels, you realize that there are individual boxes of color. Now, let's pause right there. You can see there are different shades of brown which have come together to form that slab we see in the full image. So these individual boxes of color are what you call pixels. Now let's zoom out and go and look at another color scheme. Let's take a dive into the grass and realize that there are also different shades of color in that section. These individual shades of color or boxes of color are what we know as pixel. So Megapixels means thanks to the power of what pixel. Yeah, so basically when they tell you that something is 2000 pixels, it means that individual dots of color on that screen is 1000 pixels, basically. So the more pixels you have in your screen, the more details you have in that image, and so on and so forth. So we have to find a way of measuring those pixels. And that's where we come to resolution. So resolution is basically a way of measuring those pixels. When I have two pixels on the horizontal and two pixels on the vertical, it's a two by two resolution screen. Done. So let's take a look at standard resolutions we have on the market. First off, we have 720p, which consists of 1280 by 720 pixels on both the horizontal and the vertical. Moving on, we have a 1080p, which is also called full HD. It has 920 by 1080 pixels. Then we move on to 2K. 2K has 2560 by 1440 pixels. Then the most common one nowadays is a 4K panel, which is 3840 by 2160. We have other higher panels than that. We have the 8K and even 10K, but then they are not, if you're watching this video, you are not likely to have one of those screens. So basically, hey! So basically, those are the standard resolutions we have on the market. Next up, we have refresh rate. So what is refresh rate? In every video, it consists of different images that are shot in succession, right? So if I see a five second video, it might consist of 200 images that are being shot within short time intervals. So if I say a video is shot in five frames per second, it means that there are five images that are being shot in one second. So as I said, refresh rate is measured in frames per second. So when you're going to buy a monitor or a phone and they tell you that the refresh rate of the screen is maybe 90 hertz, which is also known as frame per second. It means that in one second, there are 90 images that are being shown in succession. To see how this reflects in your day-to-day -day usage, this is a video to explain. 
So take a look at the video we have here. Looking at the first ball, which is label 15, it is going at a frame rate of 15 frames per second. The second ball is going at 30 frames per second, and the third ball is 60 frames per second. Now, ignore the last ball, since most of the monitors you'll be using to watch the screen will not be at 20, 120 hertz. So, if you look at the video, you realize that all the balls are moving at the same speed, but then the 60 is much smoother than the 30, and the 30 is much smoother than the 15. So that's how refresh rate reflects on your screen. So when you're using a higher refresh rate, you see that your image, your icons and stuff, or what you, animations in the video tend to be very smooth, and that's the advantage that higher refresh rate brings you. Also, let's take a look at a second video. It was it's from a channel called Phone Buff, and they do reviews on fast phones. And I mean, you should check out our channel. I'll link it in the description below. Now, taking a look at these two phones, we have the OnePlus 7 Pro and the Galaxy S10. Now, you see that, if you look carefully, you see that the OnePlus 7 Pro has a smoother animation. As it's scrubbing through the list, you can see that it's moving up and down very smoothly, rather than the 60Hz panel on the Galaxy S10. Now, this is the advantage that a higher refresh rate gives you. Currently, most of the screens we have on the market are 60Hz. However, we have few of the phones that are more than 60Hz. So we have the 90 hz display we have on the ROG phone and the OnePlus 7. Also, the Razer phone has also brought 144 refresh rate screens and that calls for a very smooth experience while you're using it. So next up we have panel types. So on the market we have two main types of panels. We have LCD and OLED. LCD standing for liquid crystal display and OLED standing for organic light emitting diode. Now, LCD consists of a lot of layers, so it tends to be much thicker than OLED. So LCD, as the name goes, liquid crystal. So it has a layer of liquid crystals that, you know, twist and turns, and when light is passed through, it produces different colors. It passes through a different layers called the polarizers, but then I don't want to bore you a lot, so let's just talk to stick to the basics. So now, based on the twisting and turning of those liquid crystals, light is passed through and you see the image on the screen. That's basically how LCD is. However, OLED makes use of pixels. In fact, LCD makes use of pixels, but in OLED, each pixel is independent of each other. So basically what this means is that every pixel is controlled individually by itself. What does this do for OLED? So when you have an OLED screen, if you see black on the screen, it's actually very black because the pixel is turned off. This saves battery because when, if you are using a dark background like I am using, you have, all the pixels are off and so it's not using a lot of battery and you know, those stuff. Another advantage of OLED, as I said earlier on, is that it doesn't have a lot of layers, so it tends to be much thinner than LCD. So as you can see on the screen, we have an LCD on the left and an OLED on the right. You realize that the OLED has more vibrant colors and the blacks are much deeper than the LCD. So it gives a more immersive experience when you are watching it. Also, an advantage of OLED is that it has great viewing angles. If you realize, some of your TVs, when you sit on the side while watching, you realize that it has this white tint on it because the viewing angles of LCD are usually not good. However, this, in these recent years, we have, they have been making LCDs which are more better in terms of viewing angles. So when you sit on the side, you get a better experience than previous years. Finally, we also have new technologies that are being brought in the market. But before that, let me talk about Samsung's QLED. When you enter a Samsung store, you realize sometimes they have labeled on their TVs QLED. Now, QLED is basically an LCD but with better colors and better viewing angles. So if you are going for a TV and they said one is QLED and one is LCD, I advise you go for the QLED, even though it might be more expensive. Finally, we have a new one that has been brought to the market by Samsung, which is called Micro LED. Now, Micro LED brings the good side of both OLED and LCD to the market, all right? So for Micro LED, have inorganic materials in the display. I didn't mention, but then OLED has organic materials in the display, so it has some advantages and we'll come to that. But for micro LED, 
it has inorganic pixels that are independent of each other. So you see each box has this red, green and blue light that manipulates itself to produce different lights in the color spectrum. So for micro LEDs, it doesn't have the disadvantages that is in the OLED, which we will come to in a second. And it has better viewing angles and a long lasting experience. So what are the disadvantages of OLED? Because OLED has organic material in between the panel, the organic material tends to degrade over time, causing a phenomenon called burn in. So I'll give an example of a burning. So looking at this image, you realize that on the right side of the TV, you can see there's a faded icon in the corner. Now, this is due to the fact that after you were, if for instance, if you're a person who watches TV, maybe GTV or Channel 3 for a very long time, the icon stays at the same place, right? So if you continue watching it like for five hours, continually every day the pixels tend to burn off at that particular point so when you move to a different channel you realize that there's like a, a translucent image of the icon at that particular point on the screen this is one main disadvantage of OLED however in recent years they are developing and making it better so these burning issues don't come in often so Mike, why isn't micro LED out in the market yet? Well, the price is... Eventually. <laughs> Next up, we have brightness. So now, why would I talk about brightness? Have you sometimes realized that when you move outside in the bright sunny day, you can't really see the icons on your phone and you can't navigate through easily? Here's where brightness comes in. So now brightness is a spec that is measured in nits. So the more nits you have at peak brightness, the brighter your screen will become outside and the more you can see it. Currently, Samsung produces the brightest screens on phones and they are well ahead of all the other competitions in terms of display. So when you're going in to buy a phone, I recommend that you check and ask about the peak brightness of the phone. If the peak brightness is at least 550 nits, you are safe because outside you can see it properly and you have any problems with the display. We also have different characteristics of displays, which is HDR, colors, color calibration, and different stuff. But then most of those things I'll explain it in the article I'll link below. So check it out if you want to see most of what these are talking about. So guys, I hope I've helped you some way, somehow, somewhat, somewhere in your life. So when you enter a store and you're going to get a gadget and they're giving you the display that is 4K QLED, you also tell them that you two you know. But pause. I hope you have subscribed. It will really help me if you subscribe. So if you have not, you pause the video and subscribe, you continue. So, using this knowledge I've gotten, you can use to get your display and see which display suits you and which one will be beneficial for your consumption and your taste. I'm Michelle Manuel once again, you're watching Tech Haven, and please make sure to subscribe and like. And if you have any questions, you can put it in the comment section, I'll be glad to answer them. And you can also check out my blog where I've explained more stuff which I didn't explain in this video like HDR and stuff. So guys, until next time, bye bye.